talk about something that the Lord dropped immediately in my heart when I went to pray for you guys um, a couple weeks ago. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a, I'm a worship leader, and so usually the Lord will put something on my heart re regarding praise or like a lifestyle of worship to teach about. Um, and so that's kind of my go-to, my default. But he gave me something totally different. And so I know that he has you guys on his mind. He has something specific for you today. So it's going to be awesome. Um, really quick, I want to thank Pastor Zach and Ashley for inviting me to speak. It's such an honor. Um, we've been so blessed just to be in Rama Youth this week. Rama Youth is awesome, right? They do so well. They do everything so excellently. And I know that they do it because they love you guys and they want to see God move in your life. So it's, it's just been a blessing. Amen. So my name is Whitley and I am from Idaho. Has anybody here been to Idaho before? Oh, nice. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so I'm from Idaho. Um, I was a PK, uh, served God all my life, blessed to say that I've been in a relationship with the Lord since I was a young kid, and, and God has been faithful. How many of you can say that God's been faithful in your life? Amen. Awesome. So I actually lived here in Oklahoma for five years. I went to Ramo Bible Training College, and that's where I met my husband, Jonathan. Can you stand up? This is Jonathan. <laughs> and um, Jonathan and I are both in full-time ministry. He's a youth pastor, and I am a worship pastor at our church in Boise, Idaho. And we're just really honored to have spent some great time here at Rama. Um, we had the privilege of traveling on the crusade team with Pastor and Miss Lynette. My husband was a guitar player, and I was one of the singers, and it was just such a blessing to our lives, and I also had the privilege to work here at Rama for a short time in the music department, and, and the things that I learned here were so valuable in my life. I would not be standing here in front of you today if it hadn't been for those things, and I wouldn't even be a worship leader if it hadn't been for those things, and so God is good. Um, let's see. All right, who has their Bible with them today? Show me your Bible. I'm still waiting on some of you. Okay, there we go. All right, who has a notebook? Awesome. Okay, cool. So, um, like I said, the Lord gave me something really specific for you guys that we're going to talk about. Um, first, I want to play a video for you guys. So, I'm going to play a couple of clips. Um, you can go ahead and play those. So, what I want you guys to do is tell me what you notice about these clips, what they have in common after the video's over. There is audio to it if you want to add that. That's Oklahoma right there. <laughs> All right. So what comes to mind when you guys see that video? 
that's satisfying, right? So satisfying. So the title of my message today is Satisfy. So these videos, I got to admit, I like to watch these videos all the time. My husband makes fun of me because I can sit there and watch pressure washing videos for like an hour, and it's just, it's great, right? Does anybody watch these kind of videos? Am I the only one? <laughs> okay. All right. So these, this is just kind of a funny example of something that we find satisfying in our, our life, right? You might be scrolling on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, something. You see these videos, and somehow they just draw you in, and it's just like, oh, it's so nice, right? <laughs> so... Today we're going to talk about some things that are satisfying to us. Um, so I want to get some examples from you guys. This is just an example of like those videos that are quote unquote so satisfying. There's even like a, a company that has a, a YouTube page, some videos that's literally called so satisfying. Um, but I want you guys to give me some examples. What is so satisfying to you? Somebody raise your hand. Yes, go. Shout it out. When your room's clean, anybody agree? Yeah? Okay, who else? Go ahead, shout it out. When all your gaming stuff is clean? There you go. Okay, go. Hot blankets out of the dryer. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, shout it out. The sound of a basketball bouncing. The sound of hitting the sweet spot on a composite. Can you say that in the mic? Because I don't know what you. The sound of hitting the sweet spot on a composite bat in baseball. Oh, composite bat in baseball. Yeah. Okay, who else? Graydon has one. Graydon, I have one. <laughs> I can't say that. All right, go ahead. When all your homework's done, you can just relax all day. Yep, that's a great one. Okay. Keyboard sounds. Keyboard sounds. A perfectly set up fireplace. Perfect set up fireplace. Light rain. Light rain, yes. All right, a couple more. When you lose something, then you find it. When you lose something and find it, that's a good one. Snow. Snow, I love snow too. All right, give me a really good one, guys. When the music is loud enough that you feel the bass in your chest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a made bed. A made bed, yes. Okay. How many of you make your bed? All right, pretty good. A pencil scratching on paper. Ooh, that's not a good one. A pencil scratching on paper? You guys like that? <laughs> that's like nails on a chalkboard a little bit. <laughs> All right. The sound of rain while you're sleeping. Yeah, the sound of rain while you're sleeping. Okay, let's do two more. Waking up before your alarm when you still have like an hour before you have to wake up. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay, last one. Sleeping after a long day. Yeah, sleeping after a long day. That's great. Okay. One more. Okay. When they make some, like, delicious food. Mm. <laughs> okay. One more. Winning the five-on-five -five tournament. Oh. You guys are awesome. Okay, so clearly there's a lot of things in life that are satisfying. Some of the things that I thought of were like, you know when it's, well, it's a good example to be here at camp meeting because it's been like over 100 degrees, right? When you're like sweating and you're outside or you get in a hot car and then you get inside and there's like a water bottle has like water dripping down the side because it's so cold. And then you take a drink of that water and it's like, because oh, it's so hot here, right? Who's, who here is from Oklahoma? Oh, wow. I thought there would be more of you guys. Okay. So you guys live in some of the worst humidity ever. South Dakota. Who's from South Dakota? Awesome. <laughs> who has ever gotten, like, uh, a birthday card with money in it? Isn't that satisfying? Or, like, if you get... A, fat check if you have a job and you get your paycheck. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> um, you know, some people actually look to find satisfaction in things that we're talking about. Some of the things that we're saying are, you know, just 
little funny things that we like to uh, watch or do. And and those are lighthearted, fun. But there's other things that people look for satisfaction in life, like I just said, a paycheck. There are some people that actually put a lot of their worth and their satisfaction in what money is coming in. Or there might be people that find satisfaction even in relationships. And not even necessarily like sinful relationships, but some people look for their satisfaction in a relationship with their parents or their best friends, um, even their teachers, things like that. Um, and there's other things too, like some people are looking for satisfaction um, by scrolling through TikTok. Or, you know, we did the screen time exercise the other day. You know, that kind of reveals what a lot of people are looking for satisfaction in. And there's a lot of things that you can do on your screen that will make you feel good for a time, right? Um, a lot of people, and this is one that is my personal pitfall. I like to watch Netflix series, or, you know, not just Netflix, but I like to watch series on TV. And so I'm a binge watcher, so that can be my downfall there. Um, a lot of people look for uh, satisfaction in things like movies, TV. And then it even gets into things that are a little bit more serious. Like some people seek to find satisfaction in this life from substances like drugs or alcohol. Um, some people look to find satisfaction in sexual relationships or even, um, like we said, money. Um, but what, one thing that I recognized when I was thinking about all these different things is that satisfaction from things like, let's say, drugs. How long does that last? How long does a high last? Right? It's like, I mean, I don't know, like a couple hours, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you have to go back and do it again to continue to stay satisfied, right? Um, so today we're going to talk about satisfaction and how we can be satisfied in this life, not just temporarily, but all the time. Amen? Um, so the message title today is Satisfy. So can you go to the next slide? We're going to read the definition of satisfy. So satisfy means to meet the expectations, needs, or desires of someone or to fulfill. And then satisfied means content or pleased. Everybody say content or pleased. So that's what it means to be satisfied in few words. Um, I actually looked up Satisfi how to be satisfied on Google, because I wanted to see what the world says about satisfaction. And so I found a couple of articles. So Time Magazine uh, put out this article. It's called How to Be More Satisfied with Your Life, Five Steps Proven by Research. So number one is friends. Say friends. Number two, have a life story. Number three is have goals. Number four, money isn't the answer. And number five, keep growing. So these things sound pretty good, right? Um, and there's another ar article from Inc.com, and it's called uh, Seven Steps to Leading a More Satisfying Life. So number one is focus on the positive. Number two, find your stress relief. Number three, don't be afraid to take time for yourself. Number four, take responsibility for your actions. Number five, be more understanding. Number six, reevaluate your relationships. And number seven, live your best life. So, again, those things sound pretty nice, right? Do they sound good? So, but when we look at them, like, live your best life, you know, that can be interpreted in many different ways, or even taking responsibility for your action. Like, that might give you some satisfaction temporarily, but it's not permanent, right? Um, so, Throughout this message, let's see. Anytime I say, ooh, I want you guys to say, so satisfying. Okay, well, let's practice it. Ooh. Okay, again, ooh. Awesome. Okay, so anytime I say that, say so satisfying. So let's see. Hot blankets out of a dryer. Ooh. I think that was my favorite one. <laughs> All right, I want you guys to turn to John 4 in your Bibles. When you get there, say, I'm there. You guys are faster than me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we're going to go to John chapter 4. And we're going to read in verse 6. So we're going to read a little story in the Bible. Has anybody heard about the story of the Samaritan woman at the well? Raise your hand if you've heard about it. Okay, awesome. 
So we're going to talk about this woman. She has uh, an encounter with Jesus, um, a literal encounter with Jesus. She meets Jesus in person. Um, so we're going to read together. So it says that, uh, well, let me give you a little backstory. Jesus and the disciples were traveling. Um, his disciples went into town to get some food. Jesus was on his own. He went to get a drink of water. So it says, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you were speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And all this well, uh, this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And then Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsting again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Amen. Let me read that one more time. Verse 13, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring, giving them life. So this, this scripture uh, primarily here is talking about salvation. If anybody saved, say, hey. I think we can do better than that. Anyone born again, say, hey. hey. <laughs> Amen. So this, this is talking about salvation, but I want to take, take it and apply it to a different area of our lives. And we're talking about satisfaction. Um, so let's go to, uh, turn your Bible. Actually, no, don't turn your Bibles. Let's read it on the screen together. Psalm 63, verse 5. It says, you satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. So the point that I really want to get to you guys today is that no matter what you look to for satisfaction in this world, even if it's something that's kind of funny or, you know, even if something that's not sinful, those things are never going to satisfy you eternally, right? That, those are like the things when he talks about in John 4. He said, if you, if you come to this well, you'll have to come and drink again and again, right? You'll have to keep coming back. But if you drink the water that I give you, the living water, you'll never be thirsty again. Because it's like a spring inside. Anyone know what a spring is? Anybody can tell me what a spring is? Somebody shout it out. Yeah, it comes out of the earth. So it's kind of like a, a reservoir of water under the earth, and it, it's naturally replenished all the time. It continually springs up with water. Um, and so Jesus is comparing the, the, us to a, a spring in this situation. And so being continually filled and replenished all the time. Amen? Um, let's turn to, actually, let's read it on the screen again. Ecclesiastes 3.11. And I want you guys to really think about this when we read it. So it says that he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. And then this is the awesome part. It said he has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Amen. So this is cr crazy, actually, because what it means is that even before we chose God, even before we said yes to him, even before we were born again, God had planted inside of us this, can you put it back up? Um, he had planted inside of us this desire and this sense of divine purpose. So he planted inside the human heart, even before we chose him, he planted inside the human heart a sense of eternity, a sense of divine purpose. So kind of like a desire for him. So naturally, even, even when we're born, even since we're babies, there's a desire inside of us and a longing for God that only he can satisfy. So this becomes really obvious when you're a believer because then you see people who aren't believers, right? Or you remember how you were before you got saved and you're constantly looking for something, right, to fulfill a purpose in your life. 
And you know, a lot of people look for purpose in things like their career or in school or in sports or going to college, whatever it is, they look for some kind of divine purpose for their life. When really God planted in our hearts a mysterious longing that nothing can satisfy except for him. Amen? So when we're born again, we have that well on the inside of us, that satisfaction that only God can bring to us. Amen? And even, like, even atheists, they say, you know, don't believe in a higher being. But even with them, there's even a desire in their heart for eternity. There's a desire in their heart that only God can satisfy. And so you can kind of see that in the the different things that they search for to fulfill those satisfactions in their life. So aren't you thankful that we have the Lord, that we have relationship with him? Because we're not longing anymore. He's there. He's here in, in us. And we don't have to search for something higher or something greater because we know that our divine fulfillment comes from him. Um, so say this, say this with me, only God can satisfy me. Go ahead and say it. Only God, say it again, only God can satisfy me. Amen. So what I want to talk about today is a couple of points, how to live a satisfied life. So write it down in your notes. Number one is living water. Say living water. Living water. So it talked, we just talked about this in that scripture in John 4. So we're going to go back to John 4 in verse 10. So it said, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you're speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. So anyone who's born again in here, which I think we all are, has already done this. We've, we've asked the Lord to be Lord of our life. We have committed our lives to him. He's given us living water. Amen. And then let's go jump to verse 13. That's when he says, anyone who drinks this water, meaning the water from the well, the natural well, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Amen. So Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. When I went back to get my Bible from the seat over there, I saw that this Spider-Man sticker has been added to it from my husband. (laughs) It's like a little puffy sticker. You guys ever use those? (laughs) Probably not because you're too old for them. (laughs) Um, All right, let's go to Isaiah 58, and we're going to go to verse 11. Okay, so it says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. So remember, the spring, it's replenished continually. It's always replenished, so it doesn't fail. The waters never end. It's like a watered garden. It continually is replenished by the water. Um, and let's, uh, let's go to this next verse. So when we're talking about living water. So we know that you get living water when you get born again, right? And then we're also going to talk about living water in another context that Jesus talks about in the Bible. Let's go to John 7. Everybody turn to John 7. So this is going to be how you can actually access and use living water. This is what I mean by this number, number one, this point, living water. So we're going to go to John 7, 37. It says, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit, whose believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So when he says living water in this scripture, what's, who's he talking about? It's right there. Come on, shout it out. Holy Spirit. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. The first, the first time he talked about it, he's talking about salvation. This time he's talking about the Holy Spirit. So this is when Jesus was still here. He said, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send you another comforter, right, who's the Holy Spirit. So he hadn't left yet. So the Holy Spirit wasn't there yet. But he was talking about him when he said, if anyone thirsts, let him come and drink. 
out of his heart, he says, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Anybody filled with the Spirit in here? Say, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have the ability to speak in other tongues, right? So when you speak in other tongues, out of your, out of your spirit, out of your heart flows rivers of living water. So the way that we can use living water to satisfy us is by praying in the spirit, building yourself up in your faith, praying in other tongues, amen? So if you are ever feeling down, if you're ever feeling dissatisfied with your life, you can let these rivers of living water flow out of you, amen? That's something that we have as a tool in our belt that we can use at any time when we need to be built up in our faith, when we need to be encouraged, when, even when we need direction for our lives, amen? All right, so living water. So living water is salvation and also the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. All right, let's go to number two. Number two, how to be satisfied. Number two, how to live a satisfied life. Do the will of God. Do the will of God. So go ahead and turn back to John 4. So we talked about the woman at the well. And if you jump down to the bottom of the page, or maybe the next page in your Bible, um, Jesus continues talking. And now we're not really talking about water anymore. He's talking about food. So his disciples come to him, and they urge him, saying, Rabbi, eat. And he said, I have food to eat, which you do not know. Therefore his disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So Jesus is telling us right here that the way that he's satisfied is by doing the will of God. You know, of course, as a human, he ate real food as well. But he's, he's taking this opportunity to teach them that you can be satisfied. You can be quenched. You can get your, your food, your spiritual food from doing the will of God. Amen. So let's go to Deuteronomy 8 and verse 3. So this is, man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus was saying, you know, I have food. It's doing God's will. It's listening to what God has assigned me to do. It's listening to his voice and doing what he told me to do. Amen. So I encourage you guys today, if you want to be more satisfied in this earthly life, is to really seek out the will of God, what he's called you and specifically assigned you to do. Amen. God has given us all a sense of divine purpose. We read that, right? And he's given you each a specific assignment and calling for your life. Of course, as believers, we're all called to preach the gospel to every nation, lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. You can start there. But God also has specific things for your life. And you're going to be satisfied when you do the will of God for your life specifically. And, you know, it's awesome to do the will of God. Like, how many of you guys have followed an assignment that the Lord's given you and then afterwards been like, yes, I said yes to God and it was awesome because he never lets you down, right? Life is always better when you do what he said do, amen? So that's number two, do the will of God, do what he's telling you to do. And then let's go to number three. Number three is dwelling in his presence. So let's turn to Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is actually a chapter that's about kind of like the protection of God, God's protection, deliverance. A lot of people pray, like I know last night there was a, a tornado warning. Did you guys get that on your phones? And so some of the people that were still here were praying the 91st Psalm in the auditorium. So this, this scripture is um, mainly about God's protection, but what I thought was interesting, and we're going to read this, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, say secret place, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him I trust. So he who dwells, what does dwell mean? Does anybody know? Stay, what else? Shout it out. Live, stay, live, yes. So dwell is like to live continually, 
to stay continually. So dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And then jump, let's jump down to verse 14. It says, because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Remember what we're going to do? Ooh, so satisfying. So with, you guys like long life? Long life is awesome, right? He said, I'll satisfy him with long life. But this, this chapter is addressed to he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. From that first verse, right? This is addressed to he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. So this, this point, number three, dwelling in his presence. This is how he satisfies us with long life. Amen. Um, let's go to Psalm, oh, actually, just read it with me on the screen. Psalm 17, verse 15. It says, but as for me, justified, I will behold your face. When I wake, your presence will satisfy me. Amen. And then let's turn together to Psalm 27. When you're there, say there. You guys are fast. Psalm 27, and we're going to go to verse 4. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen? So what I want to encourage you guys with, with dwelling in the house of the Lord is to, you know, we're, we're in his presence all the time, right? Because he's with us. He's with us all the time. So we're continually in the presence of the Lord. But one thing that we can do is make ourselves aware of the tangibility of his presence that's with us, right? So, you know, you could be going about your day and not necessarily thinking about God, and he's still with you, right? Is that true? Yes? Come on, say amen, guys. <laughs> and so he's with us. We might not necessarily be aware of it in every moment. So what I want to encourage you guys to do when, you, when you're dwelling in his presence, you're aware of him, right? You're aware that he's there with you. And... Um, I encourage you guys to be with him with no distractions. So take time in your week, take time in your day to be with the Lord and be aware of his presence. You have to make yourself be aware of it. And then you spend time with him in that secret place. Dwell in the secret place, in his presence. And you have to make yourself aware and start to recognize the tangibility of his presence. And, and acknowledge him. Say, God, I recognize that you're here. I, I hear your voice. I know it. And, and that is dwelling in his presence, being there. And then, then you can take that and you can take it with you to school. And you can take it with you to work. And you can take it with you even to church. You can take it with you to the grocery store. And you can dwell continually in his presence. Amen? So can I have the band come up? Um, so what we're talking about here and what the point that I really want to get to you guys is that God is the only one who can satisfy the desires that we have. And he placed that desire in our heart for a reason, because we need him, right? And there's so many things in this world that will try to, try to capture our desires. You know, you might start to desire something other than God. And, you, you know, it might not even be something that is sin. It might not even be something that is necessarily bad. But even as a believer, you might be desiring something like TikTok. You might be spending hours and hours scrolling because it's satisfying you for that moment, right? But those things are not going to satisfy you continually the way that the Lord is going to satisfy you. Amen? And this became really real to me because even before I sat down to pray for you guys, before I sat down to study for this message, the Lord had actually given me an assignment. And he told me a couple of weeks ago, he said, I don't want you to watch any TV or any streaming services until after camp meeting. And I was like, okay. And that's something that's kind of difficult for me because I really enjoy that. And But what I realized is that I was looking to that to satisfy me in those moments. But then once the episode's over, it, 
you just need to watch another one, right? Because it doesn't continue to satisfy you the way that the Lord does. And it was just a few days later that I sat down to study for this message. And then the Lord was like, I want you to talk about satisfaction. I want you to talk about finding your satisfaction in me. And so, like I said, you guys might be looking to something that's not necessarily sinful. You know, maybe some of you are. But you might be looking to even just the most basic things to satisfy your desires. But the Lord is the only one that's gonna continue to satisfy you, amen? If you keep looking to those different things, you know, it could be whatever it is. Even if you're looking to social media to satisfy you, if you're looking for views and likes, those things are not going to last. You're going to have to come again and again if you draw from that well of the world, of people's satisfaction, the affection of others, if you're looking to social media, if you're looking even, maybe it's drugs or alcohol, if you're looking to those things to satisfy you, you're gonna have to go again. You're gonna have to continually keep on going back and back and back, and it's never gonna be enough, right? It's never gonna be enough. Even, I just keep getting this so strong, even if it's not something bad, the Lord wants you to know that he wants to be the center of your affection. He wants to be the one where you look to, to find satisfaction. He wants you to be satisfied in his presence and by his voice and not by the voice of somebody from a YouTube video, not by the story in a book, not by photos on social media, not even by the affection of your parents or your friends. God wants to be the one that satisfies.